What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today we're going to be working on a 2008 R56 Mini Cooper S. Today on the Mini behind us, we're going to be covering how to replace your high pressure fuel pump. This is a common wear item. They can fail as early as 40,000 miles. They can last as long as 150,000 miles. The example behind us happens to have 92,000 miles and it is starting to show signs of failure. And by that, I mean when you go to start the vehicle, it barely wants to run. If you go to move it, it will stall out, whether it's automatic or manual. This car just happens to be a manual, uh, meaning that the vehicle is just not getting enough fuel. Uh, after a while though, if you let the vehicle warm up, it may run okay, but that is just a telltale sign that your pump has gone out. With the pump, we recommend you replace the hardware as well as the fuel lines going to them. These can be one-time use. These can be over-torqued, causing them to not seal properly. And if your Mini has made it this far, you may be the second, third owner. Lucky for you, these fuel pumps have come down in price. Back in the day, people would leave their cars in their yards and their driveways at the shops because it was so expensive to replace this unit. Now, today, it's a little bit more affordable and with the lifetime replacement guarantee, you can keep your car for as long as you like, worry-free about this high-pressure fuel pump. And just like any other vehicle, uh, early direct injection motors, these are number one failure on all those systems. Uh, and one thing to note, these are cam-driven. This one runs off the intake uh, camshaft. So worst extreme case scenario, if this unit locks up, then you're looking at grenading your engine internally as it's going to lock up the cam, shear some teeth, and break some chains. So definitely want to stay on top of this. You're going to still going to have a check engine light more than likely on your car. After you install this unit, you're still going to want to go in there and clear it with your scanner of choice. We like to use the Autos here in-house, which we'll show you once we're done installing this part. But before we get started, let's take a look at some of the tools we're going to need for this DIY. For this job, you're going to need a 12 millimeter wrench. This will be one of the most important tools along with your T30 and T25. For those of you that can, a flared wrench is best for tightening and loosening the lines, especially if you're not replacing them. That way you don't risk stripping them. Uh, but otherwise, you can do the job with a regular 12. Flathead screwdriver helps. A magnet tool comes in handy. We'll be using a quarter inch ratchet to drive our T30 and T25. For torquing, we have a torque wrench as well as a crow's foot. It's a 12 millimeter crow's foot for the fuel lines. And then we have these funky looking pliers. These are like hose pliers with a split end with a little bit of a curve. That's gonna help us remove one of the soft fuel lines that we'll be working with today. Keep some towels handy as you are gonna be working with gas or some safety protection. Now with that, let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. To get started, we have to get to our high pressure fuel pump, which is located beneath this intake elbow and the lines are located underneath the air box. So we're gonna be removing all of that. If you've done a vacuum pump, then you're familiar with how this intake comes out. But if you're not, follow along. We have a couple of clamps to remove first, so let's get started with that. And right, we're gonna go ahead and start by removing the clamp over at our turbo here. I'm gonna loosen that up, pretty straightforward. Moving up, we have a sensor here to remove, small tab here on the inboard. Go ahead and push that in. Just pull up on that, get a little push, and it'll come right off. We're gonna go ahead and undo this line here. Now, our car is equipped with an aftermarket catch can, so you might see some of these lines look a little bit different but the idea remains the same. We have a small clip over here that holds in this other line that goes to our PCB. Same thing, we're just trying to work up the clip so we can pop this up. Sometimes these can be a little bit tedious, especially if they haven't been off a lot. There we go, just push it up in the bottom and shoot it across the engine bay. And then this hose simply just pops off. Tuck that over to the back. We have one more clamp here. And now we can pull this intake boot off and we'll just set it to the side. Over at our air box, we have a mass airflow sensor to disconnect. Let's push on the little tab and release. Tab is right here, push down on it. You can tuck that wire into the side. And then the top half of our air box is held in by four T25s. This is a great time to inspect your air filter now if you wanna do that. You can also try just removing the box as a whole once you remove the T25 over on the side. We'll split it in half just so A, we can check the filter and B, just give you an idea of what that looks like. These are usually captured. 
you can you can go ahead and try to remove them if you like. Sometimes, as these cars age, people have done that by accident. So just be mindful. You don't want hardware flying all over your engine bay. <coughs> and you'll see our last one has been replaced with a Phillips head. We'll just go ahead and remove that one in full. All right. And now we can go ahead and pull the lid off. Be mindful of your vacuum pump line if it's still in place. Then we can go ahead and pull our filter out. This one is new as we just installed it on another DIY. And then to get this bottom portion of our air box off, we have one T25 that's hiding right here between this PCV line. We're gonna go ahead and remove that one and then it's four rubber grommets that hold it in place. Same with this one, this should be nice and captured in the box and now we can pop the box up and we'll just set this to the side. And next, just because it's gonna be a little bit in the way and a little easy to remove, we're just gonna pull this bottom feed tube out. It's already kind of loose to begin with, just gotta sneak it. Now it just give us a little bit more room to work with when we do our fuel lines. And now that we have all that out of the way, we have a nice view of our high pressure fuel pump. Here are our two fuel lines. We're going to want to disconnect the hard line first to release pressure in the system before we work on removing the soft line. So let's get started with that. Let's grab some towels, something to keep our face safe and uh, get to it. With better access to the high pressure fuel pump, now we're going to release the hard line first uh, to release the pressure in the system. That way we can take off both lines safely. I'm gonna use a flared wrench. This is a 12 millimeter. You can use a regular 12 as well. I just like the idea of these. Let's have a chance of stripping anything. We have a towel that we're gonna put over the wrench uh, before we crack it open, just to catch any uh, gasoline that's gonna come out. And with the pressure behind it, we don't want it squirting in our eyes. So let's go ahead and get started. So we got our wrench. We're gonna go ahead and get that on our nut here. I'm gonna cover everything with the rag both beneath and above. All right, now that we've loosened this up a bit, I'm gonna switch over to a regular 12. I'm not gonna be worried about stripping that line anymore, uh, but the initial tight break free and tightening down, uh, if you have it, I do recommend using a flared wrench. And now with that hard line done up top at the pump, we're gonna follow it all the way down underneath the intake manifold and under the other end. We are gonna be replacing it, so if you're not replacing it, do whatever you want. Uh, then you can go ahead and move on to the next one. But for now, follow along. We're going to remove the rest of that line. I'm just going to throw a towel down below to catch some more of that feel coming at the bottom end of this line. And with that line undone, you can go ahead and just remove it in full. And we'll set it to the side. And we'll get it next to our new one so we don't forget to put it on. All right, my good people. Now we're going to work on removing the soft line. On the high pressure fuel pump side of things, the fitting has two little black tabs, one on either side. These can be a little bit of a pain sometimes, but the idea here is that you press both of them in, push the line in towards the pump a little bit, and then pull it back to release it. Um, you can also use some pliers, which we may switch to if we can't do it just by hand. On the bottom side, it has this almost like a quick disconnect style uh, situation going on. When you install the new one, it's just gonna clip on but to remove the old one, you're gonna see this plastic collar. We're gonna to wanna to push down on it, and that's gonna help release it from the hard line underneath the car. So we'll start with the top here first at the pump. Um, it's kind of a long reach. To give you a better view, we're probably gonna crawl underneath the mini. And by crawl, yeah, I know, I'm on a lift. We're gonna lift it up, and we're gonna disconnect the bottom line to give you a better view of that. So let's start with the top and go from there. All right, here's our soft line. Let's see if I rotate it, there's one side. There's the other side. Uh, these look very not easy to get to. Um, someone may have taken this apart in the past or not, so I'm just gonna switch to pliers now because there's no way I can get any grip on those two little tabs. Uh, we're gonna use some little 90 degree style pliers with um, some little feedies on them, if that makes sense. That's gonna help us push these little black tabs in and release this line. So these are like hose pliers they have a little bit of a weird bite to them, but it's exactly what we want for right now. So I've got both tabs in, push in, and then pull out, 
and there we go. There's also these two lines here, they're just clipped together. That just pops off and that stays with the soft line. If you follow the soft line down, you'll see there's one more clip there holding uh, two lines together. Use a small flathead or something to pop that open and release the line there. So you can see it's just like an alligator clip here at the end of the screwdriver. You just want to pry that open. Uh, I'm going to do my best using this flathead screwdriver. We'll work at this for a little bit. It's going to be a little bit hard to see since the clip freed itself from the bracket here. Um, just like anything plastic, just gets brittle over time. There we go. Pop it open and that'll free the line up from this vacuum line. All right, that's free enough. Now let's hop underneath and work on removing the rest of the line. All right, underneath the R56, our line ends right above the subframe near the sway bar itself. So the best bet is to crawl under here and get this last bit. Just be uh, mindful that the line's probably gonna be full of fuel still. And then you have your hard line coming from the tank. So expect some fuel, have a towel ready to rock and roll. Uh, I'm gonna do my best not to take a shower uh, underneath the car here right now. So I'm gonna reach in, uh, one hand in front of the subframe, one hand beneath. And the goal here is just to compress that black clip. Again, pushing the line into the hard line uh, and then pulling back to kind of help release it. Same like we did with the top. All right, there's our line. A Little bit of fuel, no problem. And I'm just gonna pull it all the way through. I have my towel on it. And here it is, my good people. So our new line has the same uh, clip here. That one's gonna go with it. What I'm gonna do is since I'm under here, I'm just gonna feed this end of our new line just up. It doesn't matter where we'll grab it later. I'm gonna go ahead and attach it now to the hard line down here so we don't have to crawl back underneath the mini. So with that, let me grab the new one. We'll clip it on at the bottom here and then head back up top. We have our new soft line. You'll notice this one doesn't have any bends or kinks in it like the old factory one does. That's totally okay. Uh, if anything, this one has better sheathing and protection. We'll be able to guide it up in there the way we need it to. So don't worry if it looks just a little bit different still good to rock and roll. So I'm just gonna feed it up randomly up into the area where we need to be, and then we'll clip it onto our hard line. We're over at the hard line. Just gonna make sure we can clip this on. We wanna hear that satisfying click. that tells us it's on all the way. As we push the line on, I'm gonna compress the black uh, release clip just to help it go on a little bit easier. There we go. All right, now with that line situated there, Make sure it's in all the way, give it a couple tugs. The last thing you wanna do is start the car and have a fuel leak, not good. So with that situated, we can go ahead and hop back up top and route the line the rest of the way and just set it to the side while we replace the high pressure fuel pump. All right, my good people, now we are ready to replace the high pressure fuel pump. We did the boring work first. A Couple of things I wanted to talk about is the pump itself. Obviously you have your seal here. Uh, oftentimes these can go bad and cause a nice oil leak. So just keep that in mind. Um, we have two uh, ports here, one for our hard line, one for our soft line. We're gonna keep these covers on in the meantime. We have a, uh, an electrical connector, which we're gonna tackle next. Uh, tab is facing the engine or intake manifold side of things. So we'll start with that. And then it's the three bolt holes. We have one on the fuel line side of things on the lower portion of the pump and two on the front facing side of the pump. So top one's super easy to get to, bottom one's super easy to get to. Uh, this bottom one, easy to get to, it's just gonna be a little bit hidden, so it might be a little bit hard for you guys to see it, which is why I wanted to point it out on camera first on the new pump. Now we know what we're working with here, let's go ahead and get that old high pressure fuel pump off. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the electrical connector. There's a small tab at the bottom. You can press that in. I'm just gonna use a flathead to push the connector down. Help me fingers out a little bit. There we go. Let that hang up to the side. And now we can tackle the three T30s that hold our pump on. We start with the T30 by the fuel line side of things. And we have our top T30 on the front side of things. And now we have our bottom one, which we're just gonna fish for. All right. Now let's pull the pump off. Now we can work our pump off. Just rotate it back and forth a little bit. 
And here we go. The culprit of all our problems, at least for today. Seal was still okay. Wasn't leaking. There's no oil pulling up underneath it here. I'm not going to mess with the pump too much. I'm going to keep it the way it is, and I'm going to take my new one, set it right next door, and would you believe it, before even messing with it, they're lined up just about the same. So that's going to make the install of this one good, or easier, sorry. So now with that, we're going to clean up the block a little bit, oil up the seal just a touch, and install. And just how we removed our old one, we're going to feed our new one in. Our O-ring is nice and oiled up, and our goal here is to line it up with the camshaft. We're going to use the forward front bolt, which is the easiest one to see and get to, to help start lining everything up. So we'll go ahead and feed that in by hand. And then we'll, we will very gently get some thread started. All right, before I snug that in all the way, let's get the other two started. Okay, just literally finger tight. Now we'll start the bottom one. This one might be a little bit tricky. We're gonna have to go in super gentle. Don't wanna drop it off of our torque spit here. And then I can try to get a couple threads in with the magnet. And then we can put our T30 in. So this might not work, but it's worth a shot. Okay, no problem. Like I said, it was gonna work just fine. Now we'll reach in with our T30. All right, and with that one nice and snug, we're gonna go ahead and start with the bottom one while we have our bit here and set our torque wrench in, 11 Newton meters, and then we'll do all three. Where's the bottom one? Where's our top one? Now let's do the front one. And then while we're here, we're gonna reconnect our electrical connector once more. Get our plug in place. Beautiful. Now we can take these uh, grommets off. I'll start with the yellow one first as we're going to move on to the hard line next. Let me grab the hard line and we'll feed that one in. All right, my good people, now we're going to follow up with installing our new hard line. The goal here is to loosely get both sides started by hand first. We're going to snug them up by a finger, then we're going to torque them down to 15 Newton meters. Today we're just going to use the old calibrated wrist. Once they're both snug up to 15 Newton meters, then we're going to torque them to 33 Newton meters. And then BMW recommends that you run the car for five minutes, let it get to temp a little bit, and then you come back and double check your lines at 33 Newton meters. So I know most of you are going to skip that step, but do it. It's the right thing to do. So let's get this in there first. All right, so now we bring in the old calibrated wrist. We're just going to snug both of them up. That is stopping there on its own. And that is stopping there on its own. We're going to call that 15 for both. Now we're going to set our torque wrench up with a crow's foot and snug them up to 33. We're going to be able to torque the top nut no problem. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get our torque wrench in at the bottom. But if you're going to be using a torque wrench and a crow's foot, super important. Just be sure that it stays at a 90 degree angle so you're not adding any length to the torque wrench, thus changing the force that you're applying. So don't do this, don't do that, and definitely don't do that. Keep it nice at a right angle. We'll do the top one, no problem. We'll paint mark it and we'll see what happens at the bottom. If not, uh, we're gonna trust the old calibrated wrist today. 33 Newton meters, not a whole lot of force. So don't gorilla it on either cause it's not gonna help you. Cross foot on, keeping it at that 90. Reposition. Beautiful. While I have you there, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with a paint mark. All right, and then I'm gonna reach in there with the torque wrench and see if I can get to the bottom one, but I don't believe I'll have enough room, uh, in which case we'll switch over to our flared wrench. So with that, we'll just hop over to our flared wrench. Unfortunately, we don't have the room that we need, but lucky for you, we have calibrated wrist today. So we'll go ahead and snug it down nicely. Yes, I know we're using the regular 12 millimeter wrench. We're just gonna get it close using the thumb power. And then we'll put the flared on for the last final snug. And same thing, we're gonna paint mark it just to make sure it doesn't move on us after our five minute run and see if it needs to be retightened again or not. We'll hit it with the paint pen just for our own Insurance here. Okay. So 
if you remember before, we had a alligator style clip down below. I'll point to it one more time. I just reached up and clipped it in. I forgot to think about you, my good people, while I was underneath the car. But that's down here. So you see we have both of the lines paired back together. Our clip went right back onto the little stud coming off the bracket there. So don't forget to situate those two um, before you button everything up. Now with that, we can install the soft line up top here at our high pressure fuel pump. And now we can go ahead and pull this protection grommet off, safety grommet, get our line on. Beautiful. That's exactly what we wanted. And we're gonna go ahead and clip the line to the other line running up here with the clip that it comes equipped with. Very straightforward. Just join the two here, pop them together. Beautiful. All right, my good people. And now with that back in place, let's get our air box back on. We'll get our intake tube set up. We're gonna run the car for five minutes off camera. I'm gonna double check everything. Again, I don't need to walk you through the removal of the air box. But then we're gonna hop inside the R56, scan the car for codes, clear the codes, and see how she fires up. Keep in mind, there's gonna be some air in the system, so the first fire up's gonna be a little rough, but we'll turn it off and then we'll check it again. We'll start with our feed pipe first. We're gonna feed that in. We're just gonna sneak this back in, depending on what you took off and how you took it off. You may have less things in the way, you may have more things in the way. And th these just typically pop in into the shrouding here. Um, oftentimes, as these cars age, the fit might get a little bit looser. Um, it wasn't even on to begin with on our car. So we're gonna do our best to get it to get on. That is nice and situated all the way in. Now back up top here, we can reinstall our lower portion of our air box. And it's got three studs and the T25 that hold it in on top of the intake manifold. Let's pop those in. We can pop our hose in. And now with the air box situated, we can reinstall our T25. That will just lock it down. Then we can install our air filter once more. Make sure the seal sits in nicely in the air box. You don't want it open, causing the box not to seal properly. Then we can install the top portion of our air box. There's three tabs that key into three tabs here on the bottom half. You can see our third one's a little broken, but two out of three is not too bad for this car. We'll get these lined up and then we can start our four T25s, or in our case, three of them and one Phillips screw. While we're here, we can plug in our mass airflow sensor once more. And now we can feed our intake pipe. We're gonna make sure that we route this line, which sits underneath it, over. We'll have that one ready to rock and roll. We can feed in over on the turbo, clock it down, get it on our air box. Beautiful. While I have you up here by the mass airflow sensor, we'll tighten down that clamp first. Make sure that the hose is situated all the way up. You'll notice there's a little notch in it that goes around the body of the mass airflow sensor so you can have a nice tight fit. We're gonna swing this hose over Feed it over to the top of our valve cover now. Just pops in all the way, and then we'll lock it in with the plastic tab. Then we can install this lower line. Make sure you put your clamp back on. Feed that on. Same thing, that kind of lines up. Little notch by the sensor. It only really goes on one way. And we'll tighten down this clamp. We can reinstall our sensor once more. Now we have our intake tube back in. That's gonna conclude the mechanical repair of this DIY. We do have a code, so we're gonna hop inside the R56, grab our scan tool, clear it, then prime the system and uh, get her started and we'll see how she runs. All right, my good people, we are inside the R56. I have the Autel hooked up to the Mini. Uh, right now we're just reading the car, trying to communicate with it. Um, we're gonna scan the ECU for any trouble codes, see what comes up, hopefully clear the light, and then we're gonna go ahead and start the car. The first start's gonna be a little bit rough. Um, just simply because the uh, fuel lines were opened, so there's going to be air in the system. So once we bleed that out, then we will be able to turn off the car once more, turn it back on, 
and see how it starts. As you remember at the beginning of the video, it's super rough, super stumbly, and it ended up just turning off. So that's kind of the uh, main theme here until the cars warm up. Easy way to tell that your high pressure fuel pump is on its way up. So something for those of you that have been watching some of the mini DIYs, you'll notice we did oxygen sensors in the previous video. We had a multiple misfire situation happening, which we suspect was the O2 sensors. Uh, on top of that, you have the fact that the car's not getting enough fuel, so that can cause the car to go a little bit haywire. So for now, we're simply gonna go ahead and erase these codes. Now we're gonna go ahead and start the car. And right off the rip, even with the fact that the airlines were opened, you can tell that the car is way better off. Starts nice, now it's idling. So definitely uh, what we wanted to see. From this point, my good people, that is gonna conclude this DIY. We're gonna hop back in front of the car, let it run for a few minutes and double check our fuel lines. Don't forget 33 Newton meters for round two on the check. Um, but otherwise that's gonna conclude this job. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave those in the comments section below. And if you like this DIY and you want to see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.